Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at a core that's currently very, very strong in the Open Great League. We're going to take a look at the Shadow Swampert plus Shadow Ninetales core here. Actually, I have I don't know when I played those battles actually it's a little bit longer ago but uh, those battles here going to be a very interesting as we're going to take a look on how good the Shadow Knight is going to be here. This core itself is very heavily used in all the regional tournaments right now. It's a very very common core and it's a very very strong core as you're going to see here the opponent actually going to invest two shields here which is kind of wild which doesn't help them at all. Knight is just gonna go to town and going to dazzling them away the opponent there is the uh, um yeah opponent basically has no play here at this moment anymore but yeah if you think about it uh, this does make all a lot of sense here because we're going to have the swampert in the lead which is going to have access to water type moves as well as ground type moves which is very good against steel type pokemon as well as very good against poison type pokemon which are pretty rare but slow it can be a thing while itself being weak against grass type pokemon and also kind of weak against flying type pokemon and especially also dragon flying type pokemon like the altaria the Ninetales just gives you the perfect coverage for that. Like, the Ninetales is going to be able to go ahead and destroy every grass type Pokemon with Powder Snow, can destroy every flying type Pokemon with Powder Snow, as well as itself, it's weak against the Steel type Pokemon, which you're going to be able to beat with a Swamp Bird, Fire type Pokemon, which you're going to be able to beat with a Swamp Bird, as well as Poison type Pokemon, which you might have guessed already, you can beat with Swamp Bird. So, <laughs> you actually see the Ninetales going completely to town, destroying everybody, and like, this team was a lot of fun. And it's definitely a very very decent team here. We have just put in Noctowl because Noctowl is just fitting for that. You can use actually Shadow Knight Hits as a say swap in this meta. The thing is, right now there is not a lot of Pokemon that really hard wallet. There are a lot of Pokemon that you can bait out for the Noctowl, which is very decent because even a um, Galarian Stunfisk, if that comes in after you already had like two fast move advantage, it loses in the two shield scenario against the Shadow Knight Hits, which is kind of wild. So. That definitely helps here. Also, what you're going to get out of here would be a Lantern, which you're going to face here right now, which you don't want to face with your um, Noctowl whatsoever. Are you going to go here for a bait? This is a very risky play. They might just not going to let this move go through, but they're going to shield this move up, which will allow us to actually force the opponent to use either two shields or going to let this Lantern go down. And we can say goodbye to that Lantern. We're going to see a Ninetales, Ninetales, Ninetales coming up against the opponent's Medicham, of course. This is going to be an Ice Punch bait. Very smart decision by the opponent. We're actually going to bait here, which in hindsight I wouldn't have done here or right now. But the opponent going to shield, so definitely the right play here. Very good me. Very good. Like, that's my gameplay as well. But, so, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to see some stuff afterwards, of course. Um, you might want to do something a little bit differently. Yeah, very nice catch from the opponent. Amazing catch, uh, catching uh, Dazzling Demon onto an Umbreon. 10 out of 10. And definitely helped them out a lot there. As they're going to have to now go up against our, um, our Noctowl, which will definitely have a great time against the opponent's Medicham here. So, good game there, opponent. Next game, we're going to see the Medicham against us as well. As we can now go ahead and go for some Hydro Cannons. This is a matchup that I actually don't really like to play out. But I kind of like to get some damage on them and then swap out here. This is going to put them into range for one Weather Ball. Ah, uh, the Great League meta, you'll love to see it. The good old Medichamp plus um, Bastion. I mean, I'm also kind of guilty for that. I think I hit like three, four times Legend in the Great League while running Medichamp plus Bastion and then Likitang as a say swap. So I cannot really complain too much about it. I'm also guilty for using, like, abusing this tactic here. It's just such a strong core. I really hope, like, I think actually Bastion is fine. Bastion, of course, can a hard wall Pokemon, but you have always kind of hard walls. Like, you can, of course, not complain that Bastion destroys every flying type Pokemon and every A9 or whatever. But then again, also every grass type Pokemon going to destroy the uh, Swamp Bird. So, like, you can also complain about that one, but that's just the thing. I think Bastion is actually a completely balanced Pokemon, which I really like about it. While it, now I know a ton of people are going to do go into the comments and say, oh, I disagree, whatever, whatever. But you have so many double weaknesses on Bastion, which just balances out. Like if Bastion didn't have the extra rock typing or whatever, I think it would have made it a little bit too good or whatever. But just having a double weakness against fighting, which is a very common Pokemon that you use here with Medicham or like in general, a very common coverage move as well. As well as having a double weakness against um, ground type moves, which you have everywhere in the meta as well, with the Galarian Stunfisk, with 
whatever. Then you have Reggie Steel, which completely locks it down. You have even coverage on Roller Rain here, which is a ice type Pokemon that you usually don't really want to have, like, which you usually don't really want to have against the Bastion. But here you have access to Earthquake, which does a ton of damage. So. While Bastion is the bulkiest Pokemon or something for the Great League, I still think it's a very balanced Pokemon just because it has so many weaknesses that are so common in the meta. But of course, if you align it in the correct po like yeah, in the correct slots, you're going to have a great time with it. Which is just RPS, which yeah, like it's it's not really a Pokemon. You have to really have it in the right spot, otherwise you can give the opponent a ton of energy for free, which is not really what you want to see. So yeah, I think it's a balanced Pokemon. I don't think this is something that you should fix. What I hope that gets fixed is Medicham, though. And I feel like Medicham is just taking over the meta a little bit too much. Maybe a counter nerf, maybe, but just make counter the same as Poison Jab, which is still a very strong fast move. Like it wouldn't completely nuke the Pokemon away or whatever but it would make it more balanced and i think medicham is just too strong for the current meta just my opinion right now let me know in the comment section which pokemon you actually would like to nerf like and how you would want to nerf it because i think um making counter a poison jab clone might be a very like normal idea like that should be definitely something that's possible because poison jab is still a very strong fast move like you see it in Nido queen you see it in naya league and master league it's a very very good fast move to use so i think that would be something that i would really like to see at least as a nerf because i feel like those counter users are very very strong right now and like in every regional you see like so many many gems even though the trend right now goes a little bit away from it just because 90s is so common it's just yeah Nighthills has, of course, access to Dazzling Gleam as well, which is going to be very strong here. We're going to see an Azumarill. It's going to be an interesting one here as well. Azumarill is an iffy one for us, but it's a definitely something that you can take, but it's a little bit awkward. We go for the bait here. Pretty sure this bait all went successfully. Exactly, I remember this game still. We're going to be able to go for one Earthquake here, and this is going to hit the opponent as well, which now puts them basically into a range where I can go for a Hydrokin in order to knock them out. After getting more damage with my fast moves in here as well, we're going to load up two Hydro Cans here easily. The opponent is now forced to shield, but it doesn't even help them at all. Like, we just have a ton of energy. They're going to load no shield here as well. As you're going to see the Trevenant coming in, they can stay in here. They can knock me out, but they have to shield once before that because I can hit this Weather Ball here now. And this will allow me now to just go ahead and unlight my Nocturne afterwards against them. They can go for the Shadow Ball. Their energy goes to waste no matter what. And I will be able to just wait out the Switch Clock here, hope that there's something weak in the back. And they're going to have a Sableye in the back. <laughs> my man didn't prepare at all for the, um, yeah, for for my Noctowl here, which is amazing. Water Gun Lantern, it's such an annoying Pokemon. I hate this thing because it literally cost me the, my ticket to Yokohama, which is kind of funny. But um, yeah, my team during the Utrecht Regional, which you most likely saw the video on my channel, if you didn't see it, definitely check it out. Um, it was really, really good, destroyed nearly everybody 2-0. But I literally lost two times to Water Gun Learn Turn, which like knocked me out as a third place. Like if the opponent didn't have Water Gun version, Spark is so much easier to handle for me right now. But yeah, Water Gun Lantern is, is taking over the meta. I really hope that we maybe get something as well for that. I don't know. Like I don't think Surf, like giving Surf to that Pokemon really helped the meta out too much. I really find this Pokemon insanely annoying, but... Yeah, we're going to see now the Noctowl coming in. We can go ahead and go for one Weather Ball, but the opponent swaps into their Frosts first. Should have thrown my Charge Ball first for sure. That was kind of a misplay, I guess. But I guess we're also going to get the Frosts now into a range where we can farm them down with our own Noctowl. Or a Swampert. Who do we choose? We're going to go into our own Noctowl here, which will allow us to go for some Charge Move here as well. Sky Attack coming through. I think I still survive 2 1 here. I think I should be able to survive 2. Yeah, definitely. And the opponent going to forfeit here anyway. That's going to be a good game here against my opponent. Next opponent, pretty mediocre lead here with the Noctowl. I think I can two shot them with the Shadow Swampert, but of course, I don't really want to go for that. Um, actually, can I win this in the two shots then? Not sure. Maybe I can. Can I? I don't know. Uh, we will be able to at least go ahead and go for some weather ball damage against the opponent's um, Galarian Sunfisk. As you're going to see here, we're going to let this move go through, but it's going to be still a very close matchup for the opponent. They're going to have to shield up some moves as well, as so I can go ahead and go for some weather ball damage. Gonna get them low, gonna get them into a range where I can farm them down with my Swampert, which is even better because now I'm gonna get all the energy in the world, and you know already Swampert doesn't really have any answers in this current meta. So we're going to see now the opponent's Swampert coming in. That's amazing for us is this Pokemon definitely does not want to get hit by a Hydro Cannon here. Yeah, I tried to swap out onto the charge, moved in, work out whatsoever, but I can just take my shields here, I think. Okay, that maybe shouldn't have done that, but hey, 
It's fine, I can take the next move here. But um, I should have just most likely kept the shields for my own Swampert because my own Swampert would have had a greater time here against the opponent. They can now go ahead and go for some charges with their own Unnoctowl. Issue here is this does not put them into range for farm down, I think. But actually, no, never mind. I think it does now. Can we actually much shot down the opponent here? This would be insane. Let's take a look at this one. We can much shot down a Noctowl. That's amazing. And now Hydro Cannon going to hit them. I think they're going to let this move go through here, rightfully. Very good play by the opponent. Otherwise, I would have went for the Red Crack. But this still doesn't really help them, as we're going to be able to knock them out. And next opponent here going to be an awkward one, because you're going to have to face against the Deoxys defense. This Pokemon has access to the move Rock Slide right now, which is a very good move against our backline, of course. But they decide to swap out into a Galarian Stunfisk. Sadly, because they got so much damage with the counter, I don't think we're going to be able to realign our Pokemon here, especially as our IV spread from our lone Nine Tails is not the best either. I still haven't got a single good one of them. I think I got like, I don't know, 20 or something from Rocket Radar thingies there, whatever, Rocket Grunts. But sadly, I still don't have a good alone Nine Tails, so we still have to deal with that one. Otherwise, I would bring it to regionals as well, but I'm just not lucky with this Pokemon, which happens i guess it just happens we're going to be able to shield up the rock side here that's amazing play by me always shield up the rock side that's definitely the most threatening move they have a thunderbolt like a why um thunderbolt doesn't really make too much sense on this pokemon by the way rock side is the way to go in the current meta because they're going to be able to hit those alone 90s you're going to be able to hit those flying type pokemon a little bit easier and we're going to see a Mandibus coming in here right now that's going to be an interesting matchup for us as they're still going to have the galarian stunfisk in the back we will be able to catch a move here onto our Noctowl, which will allow us to take this move pretty easily. Galarian Stunfist coming in here. Galarian Stunfist going to go for a Rock Slide here, and this Rock Slide going to do some pretty decent damage against me. As you're going to go straight for the um, Sky Attack here, I don't think it's going to knock them out. Oh, never mind. It's going to knock them out straight away. And now it's going to be a close matchup here. They're going to go straight for the charge move here. They didn't over farm at all. I can now go back into the Swamp, but after my uh, Noctowl just died there, and I can go ahead and go for some Hydro Cans, but it's going to be a little bit of a scarier one maybe they want to still never mind they cannot even get to another charge move here we're going to be able to go for our own and i think there was a cmp tie but mandibus basically wins against nothing the cmp tie amazing need for us again we're going to encounter now is crafty coming in you see me here going for one charge move this seems to be a little bit odd but actually the matchup from a Noctowl against crafty can be a little bit tricky for the Noctowl. i think crafty can win this just two shields going straight for the power punch but like this, there is literally a zero play the opponent going to have there. Of course, they can go back now into the Galarian Stunfisk, and there's going to be an iffy matchup later on as well, because they're going to get out of this matchup with a ton of energy, but also they're going to have to throw eventually here, because our Noctowl is still going to be able to hit those Shadow Balls in the SC already. The Galarian Stunfisk going to go very, very low into the deep red half, and the Rock Slide going to knock us out now. But this is only a Rock Slide. You cannot store a Gla the Galarian Stunfisk, I want to say, <laughs> a Rock Slide as well as a Earthquake. You can also not store a Galarian Stunfisk for sure, but we will be able to go for one Hydro Can here. Gonna get the shield. Now it's Charm Ninetales against the normal Ninetales. And this is actually a core breaker for this one, which is funny because right now there is two cores in the main tournament meta. So there's like the Galarian, uh, the I want, why do I always say Galarian Stunfisk? The uh, Lone and Ninetales plus Swampert, but as well as the uh, um, Water Gun version of Lantern plus a Noctowl core. And I think kind of both of them died to Charm Nine Tails, which is kind of funny. But also both of them died to a different moveset on their own Pokemon. For example, Swampert and Nine Tails core breaks to Nine Tails, but with Charm. The uh, um, Water Gun version of Lantern plus Noctowl core breaks to Lantern, but with other fast move with Spark. So that's kind of funny to be fair. But yeah, here we're going to see an opponent with one Umbreon, which definitely doesn't want to shield this move up, which is kind of funny. Yes, yeah, so we're going to still be able to take one charge move here which is going to be the psychic but i don't get to the charge move here this was a huge mistake by me and i think this might cost me the game here let's take a look at this one foul play coming through we're going to do a decent amount of damage here as we can go ahead and go for another charge move but this is not looking good whatsoever i don't know why i didn't shield there definitely a misplay by me as you're going to see now the opponent going into their noctowl again we can go for another charge move here swampert is just too spammy going to knock them out and now the saber is locked into against our noctowl here 
This is a not ideal for the opponent whatsoever. We're going to be able to get the shield from the opponent as well, which now allows us to most likely just farm them down, get the energy, and this is going to be amazing because we can use our shields here completely freely against the opponent's Sableye. As are they going to do more damage than the Umbreon, but yeah, that's going to be most likely a very good game. We're going to go for a Shadow Ball, does slightly more damage than the uh, Wing it uh, yeah than the sky attack but yeah we're going to be able to now go ahead and just just go for a charge against the opponent's umbreon this should seal the deal and this is going to be also now it for the video hope you enjoyed it if you enjoyed it uh please leave a like also you're going to see two videos on the screen maybe one of them might be interesting to you click on them then and i see you in the next video bye